We're finishing up our skeletal muscles looking at the lower leg. And what I have here is a picture of a left leg, just two different images. And what I try to do is practice the vocabulary with the different types of muscles to learn them in different ways because you have different types of models, different charts, different pictures to use. But a lot of times it's just learning the language and understanding the terms. And then we'll blend in the origin, insertion, and actions with them. Remember, the origin and insertions are our attachment points. Our insertion is the point of more movement, and our origin is the point of less movement. For those who don't know, my name is Brad. I've been teaching anatomy for almost 24 years now. I try to make it simple and try to practice understanding the muscles in different areas. So we're looking at some of our flexors and our extensors and then combining the origin, insertion, and actions with them. What we'll do is we'll go through them and as I name them, try to do it as I'm doing it to remember the names of the muscles and even better, to write them out to practice the terms. After this, I'll show you the key and we'll go through it again, but we'll also talk about the OIAs, Origin, Insertion, and Actions, to better understand how the muscles work. So we start, remember this is a left leg, so we start with number one here. Number one is our tibialis anterior, because it's on the anterior side, and it's right next to the tibial bone, but on the lateral side of the tibia, because remember, this is a view of a left leg. And when I look at tibialis anterior, and where it's actually going to originate is on the tibia at the lateral condyle, because we're more towards the lateral side, and it comes down to do dorsal flexion for its action. And remember, dorsal flexion is going up and rolling back on my heels. So I go up and roll back on my heels, that's dorsiflexion. So in order to do that, that tibialis anterior will insert at one of our metatarsals, specifically number one, towards the big toe side. Then it also connects to one of our cuneiforms. Remember, there's three cuneiforms, and it's specifically the medial cuneiform. So tibialis anterior, and then when I look at two and three, these are my extensors, and my extensors are on the top of the foot. So extensor, as I follow number two, extensor digitorum longus, this tendon connects to all of my digits, and specifically my toes, or phalanges, two through five. So sometimes when you're looking at cadavers or different models, I can follow the tendon because that tendon is connected to all of my digits and my goal is to be able to extend those toes and so as I extend the toes I'm using more on the lateral side so I'm connecting with the tibia and the fibula but it's inserting at my toes so I can extend them. So extend the toes and then my tibialis anterior will help with that dorsiflexion. Similarly, number three is extensor hallucis or hollicus longus, specifically for the toe. So as I follow this on the big toe, that tendon will come down and connect. So it's inserting at the big toe and we're also extending the toe, but number one, which is our hollux. So it originates on the fibula side because it's coming off towards the lateral part of the fibula, but comes down and connects to my big toe, which is our number one or hollux because we're trying to extend the big toe. So those are my two extensors along with tibialis anterior for that dorsiflexion. As I go to the posterior side and I look at six and seven, number six, when I look at six, this is soleus. Number seven is gastrocnemius, and these are our major calf muscles. So the superficial one is gastrocnemius. Gastrocnemius is actually two heads to it, but I'm just showing this all as one. So gastrocnemius comes up and over the top of my condyles for the femur, where that's where it originates. But where it comes down and connects is that calcaneal tendon. And calcaneal tendon we often refer to as the Achilles heel. So when someone says they tore their Achilles. And now we're doing the opposite to we're doing plantar flexion. So plantar flexion is now going up on my tiptoes versus tibialis anterior is dorsiflexion as I roll back on my heels. So most superficial gastrocnemius, as I go deep to it, just deep to it, it also inserts at that calcaneal tendon to the calcaneus, remember my Achilles heel, and I'm using the soleus just the same for plantar flexion. So soleus is deep to it, 
when I use it, it's going up to the head of the fibula. So our head of the fibula is on the proximal side. That's where it originates, but still inserting just like the gastrocnemius to give me that flexion. What are we trying to do? Plant our flexion, which is up on my tiptoes. So I use the posterior side for my tiptoes. The anterior side, I'm using the roll back on my heels. And then on the lateral side, so I have five and six. And then the lateral side, so I have four and five. The long one here with this tendon attached to it, number five is called peroneus longus or fibularis longus because it's along the fibula. So it includes all of this muscle, number five, along with this tendon sheet that comes all the way down. So when I look at fibularis longus and then deep to it, number four underneath, is my brevis. And on a cadaver, you often will pull up this tendon of fibularis longus or peroneus longus, and underneath it, the fibers run more like a tree for fibularis brevis. And both of these muscles do what we call eversion or make the sole of the foot go away from the body. So often when you twist your ankle, or roll your ankle, you either invert it to where it goes in the sole of the foot or goes out and everts. So when we go through eversion, we're using fibularis longus and then deep to it, fibularis brevis. So it's originating on the fibula, but it's actually going down to my metatarsals. So I'm using this to roll my foot to where the sole of the foot faces away from the body, E for away. So let's look at the key. If we go back, number one, tibialis anterior for my dorsal flexion. When we covered our extensors, digitorum and hallucis longus, so extensor digitorum and extensor hallucis longus. Remember, we're using those to extend my big toes. And then on the posterior side, when I look at soleus and gastrocnemius, we're using those now for my plantar flexion. And our plantar flexion is to go up on my tiptoes. And then moving my foot away or rolling it away to where the sole of the foot faces away, that's eversion, that's my fibularis longus with that long tendon. And then brevis, it's brief, it's short and underneath.